Hello everybody, welcome to this virtual tour of the exhibition Christina Schult, Brutal Paradise. My name is Lenel Pohl and I am the curator of contemporary art here at the Drents Museum. I'm going to be taking you through all the different rooms and telling you a little bit about the different themes. Let's have a look. Christina Schult is part of the Neue Leipziger Schule. That's because she studied at the Hochschule für Grafik und Buchkunst, amongst others under Neo Rauch, with whom we're organizing another exhibition this October. Schultz's style is very colorful and dynamic. Her figures and plants jump right at you from the painting. They're mechanic, but at the same time they seem kind of fluid and organic. This dichotomy is something that she brings back in multiple ways by incorporating different themes into the works. Christina Schultz also paints from her own personal crises. She runs into a problem in everyday life and she works through it, through painting. This painting here is our recent acquisition. Entitled Void, I think it's a wonderful reflection of the current times we're living in. Still struggling with the corona crisis, I think we all at times feel very frustrated. The figure here is sitting with her head down, fingers in their hair, the shoulders are very square. They're one big block, basically, encompassing the whole canvas. The feeling of frustration is very visible. A little fun fact I'd like to share with you is that the Queen of the Netherlands, Maxima, actually spoke to Christina Schult in front of this painting. And I'll tell you a little secret, she's a fan. Plants are a really big theme in Christina Schult's work as well. As we can see here, she paints them in a very different way than maybe you're used to. The stems are very thick, they're very fluid. They're almost like snakes waiting to eat their next meal. We have these very colorful flowers and this clenched fist, which is a very powerful image. The title is Unverwüstlich, which means indestructible, which is a strange opposite of how flowers are normally considered to be very feminine and delicate. Here we see another way of how she plays with our expectation of something botanical. We see this woman working the field, grasping at these different plants, but her shape is very mechanical. She's almost like a machine and the flowers could very well be electrical wires. We're standing here in the room with portraiture with a special focus on technology. Portraiture is a very personal subject and because Christina Schuld works from her own personal experience, portraiture is a very natural theme for her to gravitate towards. Technology instantly combines with that because today our identity is no longer just being shaped by the real world we live in, but also the virtual one. A wonderful example of that is this little work, where the smartphone has been replaced by a diamond of gold, which is being caressed in the hand of the carrier. Her head is kind of growing towards it, and she's playing nonchalantly with her hair. You can see she's completely encompassed by this little jewel. Another really great example of how technology is shaping our identity is this portrait. It's called Loading, and here you can see the face is literally being replaced by a loading circle that's very familiar to us on platforms like Instagram. Her identity is being shaped by this technology. Something really special about this exhibition is that we have this place reserved to also show a little bit about the work process behind the paintings. Here we see a collection of items that all come from the atelier of the artist that we've gathered from her. We see all these different drawings, we see different motifs, we see collages. And if you look really closely, you can see the first sketches of paintings that are included in this exhibition as well, which I think is a wonderful little insight in the creative mind of the artist. Something that's maybe nice to highlight is this paper mache heart. It's a little reference to the work of Frida Kahlo, which is being shown here at the museum at the same time as this exhibition. Frida Kahlo used to be a really big inspiration to Christina Schultz as well, particularly in her teenage years. Frida Kahlo was an example of how to work your emotions into your paintings, which Christina of course does as well. One of the subjects Christina Schultz is really fascinated by is the nightlife. As we've seen with technology before, it's like a different realm people can step into and discover a new side of themselves. Here we see a figure cloaked by the dark, only illuminated by several colorful lights. She's kind of alluring to us, but at the same time, we can't really place her. Who is she? What's she doing? The nightlife can really bring out our animalistic tendencies. Like we can see here, these three figures, they may be held back by the fence, but not truly. They're jumping right through it at you. They're almost like in a raunchy music video with their short skirts, not really covering their bodies. But at the same time, they're the ones in control. They're the ones moving towards you, not the other way around. 
It's a totally different case if we have a look at this painting. Here the figure is not in control, she's actually immobilized. If we look at her feet, they are turned inward. The same counts for the branches that surround her. They're actually going up in her skirt, they're groping her. It's a very uncomfortable feeling when we look at this painting as a viewer. It's almost as if we're witness to a scene of sexual intimidation. At the same time, we see the village in the left-hand corner turned upside down. Her whole world is turned upside down. Is gender cultural or biologically determined? That's a question that rises in my mind when I look at Christina Schultz's work. She uses all this traditional imagery that's connected to femininity, like heels, short skirts, long hair, but she uses it in a different way. She uses it symbolically. For example, the heels signify more about the state of mind of the figure than they are a fashion statement. Of course, these connotations can live next to each other. However, I think it's a very wonderful signifier of the modern times that these symbols aren't necessarily related to femininity anymore. A really great example of this is the work Reform as well. Here we see the image of the painter reformed into all these geometrical shapes. It's like she's rediscovering her identity. She's rediscovering what she could be. Here is another great example of Schultz playing around with what gender means and all these signifiers of femininity. This is actually one of her older works. Actually, it's the oldest work in this exhibition. She already painted it while she was still at the Art Academy. We can see a figure that kind of looks like a traditional housewife. She has a scarf tied around her face, an apron in the front. She's wearing stockings and she's doing the dishes. But she's being stripped of her skin. We see the muscles, we see the, the breasts in a kind of weird pale blue color. There's nothing sexy about this nakedness. We see a snake hidden in her abdomen. Could this be a reference to the Bible and the story of Adam and Eve and how Eve was lured by the snake? We don't know for sure, but we do know that she's playing around with all these different signifiers of gender. It's up to you what we make of it. Lastly, I'd like to highlight the exhibition catalogue we made as well. It includes all the works included in the exhibition, as well as an essay that dives deeper into the meaning of the themes and the work itself. Thank you for joining me on this virtual tour of the exhibition Brutal Paradise. I hope I've made you just as enthusiastic about the work of Christina Schultz as I am. And if you are, please do come and visit us soon, because the exhibition is only on view a little longer.